Today I'm going to show you an awesome and crazy sounding sliding lick. It's pretty easy in concept, not so easy to do. Uh, I'm going to show you. Here, with my third finger I play a note, in this case the D on the G string. Then I pull to a note below, it doesn't matter which one, but I pull to the C. Slide back to the D and then hammer again on the D. And then I can play it again and again, endlessly. And changing strings, of course, and then you can build amazing expanded licks. Hello, today I'm gonna show you a cool hybrid picking lick. Goes like this. I'm in the fifth position here, thinking nay. And uh, the first note I'm gonna pick is the G on the D string. Hammer to the A on the same string. Pluck the E on the B string. And pick again the A on the D string. That's part one. And part two is kind of mirrored to that. I'm gonna pluck the G on the B string. Pull to the E on the same string. Pick the A on the D string. And pluck again the E on the B string. Together. Hello, today I'm gonna show you how you can double the speed of your trills and create a weird sounding effect. A trill is just a hammer on and a pull off. Just like this. And if you alternate the hammer on with a tap, then you can double the speed. Just like this. I'm gonna start with a tap. Pull, hammer, pull. The most difficult thing to do this is not to tap on your finger. Hello, this crazy pinball machine kind of sounding lick is based on a ridiculously easy tapping idea. Just like this. That's it. The craziness comes from the widespread over an octave. It goes like this on the high E string, hammering to the 10th fret, tapping 17th fret, pull. Pull to the 5th fret, tapping again the 17th fret and pull. And then the same on the B string. And then repeat it. And speed it up. And then you can change positions. Hello, I believe for this pretty fast string skipping lick, the hybrid picking technique is mandatory. The lick is in B major, starting on the high E string, plucking the note B, hammer to the C sharp, pull to the B, and then with the plectrum playing the F sharp in the 11th position on the G string. Plucking again the B on the high E string and then back to the same note on the G string. That's the idea. And the rest is only changing notes on the G string. Hello. 
hello. Ha, this is one of my favorite licks. It's just pull-offs on two open strings. Works in many keys, just take care that these open strings belong to the key. I'm in G major here now and playing this on the G and D string. Starting in the fourth position, playing the note B, plucking it, pull to the A, pull to the open G, picking the F sharp on the D string, plucking again the open G, again the F sharp, pull to the E, pull to the D. That's it. And then repeat it. Speed it up. And then you can change position. Hello, this is a very cool and challenging legato lick, hammering and tapping fifth on two strings. I'm in the key of G minor and playing on the D and G string. My fretting hand, my left hand, plays only G power chord as an arpeggio. And the right hand always alternates a different power chord with that uh, hammered G power chord. The right hand plays a B flat power chord. C power chord, D power chord, E flat power chord, F power chord, G power chord, back to the F, back to the E flat. And goes like this. That's it. Hello, this stunning sounding octave tapping lick is actually very easy in concept. You tap exactly what you're fretting. When I'm hammering a C here on the high E string and uh, the finger stays on the string, I'm tapping the octave and pull it back. And then you can, for example, pull to the B flat and tap again the B-flat and pull it back and then the A and then you can try to do this on two strings Hello, today I'm gonna show you an emotional open string lick. Australian country rock artist Keith Urban uses these kind of licks a lot. An open resonance string together with a melody on another string. My idea is in the key of E minor and it's played on the B and high E string. Start with picking both open strings, hammer on the B string in the third position, slide to the fifth position, open E string, both strings again, and then single notes, open E string and the B string. That's the lick. And then you can arrange it like you wish. For example, moving it up diatonically. I'm gonna show you a tiny lick idea that offers a lot of possibilities to expand it. My third finger stays put in the third position on the B string, playing the D. The lick starts with playing the open G string, hammer to the A, playing the D on the B string, then picking again the A and pull to the open G string. That's the lick. And then you can take the idea and move it into different positions or play it on different strings. Hello. 
I'm gonna show you how to dreamify a G major and C major triad by using the scale around them. G major, start on the low E string, hammer to the F sharp and to the G. This finger stays put to hold the root in the bass, then the open A string, B, C, open D string, E and F sharp and the open G string and the same back with pull-offs and we land on the G again. The same concept with the C at 9 chord, start on the A string, hammer to the B to the C, hold it, open D string, E, F sharp, open G, A, B, slide to the C, slide back and the whole way back with pull-offs. Hello, today I'm gonna show you a cool way of playing ascending and descending sixes, very suitable to bridge positions, but also sounds cool by itself. Tommy Emmanuel uses this a lot. I'm in the key of D mixolydian playing on the G and the high E string and the fretting for a major six is this and the next minor six is this and then major six, major six, again a minor six, minor six, major six and then I'm an octave up and the whole way back. And if you learn to pluck the strings with the second and third finger you can add a bass note. Hello, Ingvi Malmsteen plays this lick a lot, but mostly on two strings. If you add the hybrid picking technique to it, it's easily expandable over all strings. I'm in the key of A harmonic minor. These are the notes. Only two notes on the G string. The idea is the highest note E here alternates with the other notes which are descending and ascending. And when you involve two strings you use hybrid picking. Like this and ascending. Hello, I'm calling this bending Jimi Hendrix bending because when I hear it, it reminds me a lot of him. It's played on two strings, I'm in the key of A, I'm fretting the A in the fifth position on the high E string and also the G on the B string and then bend it to the A. And on the way up you hear it, there's a lot of dissonance and that gives it a lot of power. And when you want to use it for an ascending movement, you can orientate on your index finger and uh, play just a scale. I'm playing here the Aeolian scale. Hello, I'm calling this bending Western train bending because when I hear it and it's used a lot in blues and rock music, it reminds me of them Western trains in their movies. It goes like this, I'm the key of B minor here and I'm fretting the A on the B string and at the same time I'm bending the E on the G string to the F sharp. This makes a minor third. Additionally to that, you can also bar your pinky and play the high E string. And maybe a melody on the G string and the D string. Sounds awesome, absolutely bluesy. Hello. 
this easy to learn and awesome sounding blue slick is somewhat in the style of ZZ Top's Billy Gibbons. I'm in the key of G minor, G blues. Start sliding on the G string to the note D in the seventh position and then play the F on the B string. Play them both notes with the vibrato. Alternate them also. This way it sounds like you're playing slide guitar. And then move it down chromatically. And, and find an end somehow. Hello. This is a very cool sounding rock shredding lick in the style of Paul Gilbert and Richie Carson. This surely somewhat stretchy lick is played on two strings. It's legato means there are hammer-ons and pull-offs in it. The hybrid picking technique is not mandatory. I'm in the key of A and I'm starting on the B string in the fifth position on the note E. Hammer to the G on the same string, hammer to the A on the same string and then pick the D on the high E string. And then Pick again the A on the B string and pull to the G. And when you pull back to the E, this is the first note of the next part. The next part is exactly the same, except of playing the D on the high E string, now you play the C on the high E string by barring your third finger. This is it. Hello, this ascending blues rock lick repeats itself in three different octaves. I'm in the key of B minor and the lick idea goes like this. Again. This note is the note A and the octaves are spread like this and every A can now be a starting point for the same pattern. Hello, today I'm going to show you some open string tapping arpeggios. I've arranged a standard 1-4-5 E minor cadence. E minor, A minor, B7. E minor, I'm starting on the high E string, tapping the root E, pull to the fifth B, pull to the minor third G, pull to the E, on the way back hammer-ons. Back and forth. The same concept with an A minor, tapping the fifth E, pull to the minor third C, a, root, and a fifth, and back and forth. And for the B7, I'm gonna use the B string, tapping the root B, pull to the fifth F sharp, pull to the major third D sharp, and pull to the B, and back. This is another very cool sounding lick idea that is very suitable to bridge positions and to build up dramaturgy. It works like this. Keep on picking an open string, take care that string belongs to the key you're playing in and then visualize horizontally the scale you want to play and add them notes by improvisation. Put them where you want them and leave them notes with a pull off so you replace a stroke every time when you do a pull off like this. That's the idea and then you can do what you want, for example, ascent, a fast lick. Hello, 
This is a very cool sounding lick that trains also the stamina of your fretting hand. I narrow it down to the basic idea. I'm in the key of B minor and I'm visualizing the B minor pentatonic and I'm playing the lick on the high E string and the B string. It's starting with the B in the seventh position and that's the only stroke with my plectrum. The rest is hammer-ons pull off. Picking the B, hammer to the D, pull to the B, then hammer to the tenth position to the A on the B string, pull to the F sharp, hammer again to the A and that's the lick. And then you can change the notes as you wish and also integrate a string skipping. Slick idea I like very much and I recommend to try this. It's just a sequence or a melody where every note is played twice, like this. This lick idea is about playing this more dynamically. When we have a package of two of the same notes, the first time it's played by a hammer-on, pull-off or a slide and the second time it's picked and it sounds like this. Sounds a bit like there's a delay involved. I find this very cool. String skipping arpeggios. It makes it much easier to approach them more rhythmically. Here is an A minor seventh string skipping arpeggio. I'm in the fifth position, starting on the root A on the low E string. Then the minor third C, skipping to the D string, the seventh G, the root again A. Fifth E and here's the seventh again. That's it. And what's very cool is that the shape for a D minor seven arpeggio is in the same position. It looks the same only on these three strings. I want to show you a very beautiful and frisian sounding Japanese pentatonic scale. It's called the Hirayoshi scale and I've learned that it's also a tuning for the Japanese instrument Koto. I'm going to show you an easy to learn scale shape in A. Starting in the fifth position with the note A on the E string. B flat, A string D, E and F. Now we can repeat this easy little shape in two upper octaves. From the A on the D string in the 7th position and from the A on the B string in the 10th position. Same shapes. Beautiful. Try this.